Hey guys, so the other day I was printing up a dragon from a friend of mine, uh, by, he goes by TK, but I'll uh, put a link to his model in the video description and link to his channel. Uh, I was printing this model out really big, it was going along really good, and then all of a sudden it just stopped. The filament was still connected, everything was still going good. That way, but it just, you can tell it got to this level right here and it just quit printing. Uh, and then you start kind of looking at little details on it. You start seeing these globs on it and different things like that, which means that somehow I've got a pretty good clog up inside there. You can also see where it was printing, and then it just kind of ran out of, of the amount of PLA being extruded to, to keep everything together. So what I want to do right now is I want to go in, troubleshoot this, try to figure out what's going on with it. And this is something that... Everybody has a 3D printer eventually going to come across. So let's go ahead and take a look at it and see what's going on. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here. I'm going to go to prepare. I'm going to run down to preheat PLA. Preheat PLA number one. And let it start heating up. Okay, so we've given it about 10-15 minutes to heat up really good. Uh, there was a piece fell off of the nozzle, so it's... From all the little wisps, I'm sure it gathered up on the nozzle pretty good. First thing I want to do is I want to try manually extruding some plastic. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take and depress the extruder and try to press some plastic through, which just as I figured, it's not coming out. So that means I've got a clog somewhere probably in the upper end of this. It's an E3D uh, clone that's on this particular model of the GTEC A10. So somewhere up here I'm sure I've got a clog. So the next thing I need to do is I need to go ahead and remove the nozzle and see what is in behind there. Okay, so what I want to do now is I want to go ahead and stabilize the hot end with some pliers here. And in this case, the needle nose pliers. And then just to stabilize it. And then once the nozzle's loose, I'm able to unscrew it. And I'm going to see if I can do this with just the socket. Yeah, it looks like I might have some molten plastic around the nozzle, which means I might have a leaky seal between my Bowden tube and the, <coughs> and the nozzle. Okay, so now that the nozzle is out, now I want to see if I can extrude a little bit of plastic. My guess is I won't. Oh, I was able to. It could actually go through there now. So, you can see it sticking through there. So I'm just going to go ahead and just kind of push that through a little bit and then immediately depress that and pull this out. Get all that out of there if I can, as quickly as I can. There we go. There. So I've decided to go ahead and trim the end of this Make sure it's nice and straight. And that should make sure that I haven't crimped it too bad. I'm going to run a piece of plastic through there just to make absolutely sure I didn't mess something up on that Bowden tube. Okay, it slips right through. feels pretty good. So I'm just going to go ahead and start reassembling it and see if maybe that's all I need to do. So one thing I want to do before I go all the way back through putting this back together is I want to just take an extra piece of uh, tubing that I have. This is the Teflon tubing. And I just want to take and run it through just to make absolutely sure that I don't have a blockage inside there. And you can see nothing really fell out. So I don't think it was that major of a leak. But I think it was just enough to cause just a little bit of a clog in that nozzle. There's also a possibility that the, the filament I was using might have had a little bit of uh, dust and stuff on it because it was an older roll of filament that I was using. One other thing I did too is I, that kit that, that Chuck is selling, they have this cool little brass brush in there. So I used it to kind of clean these threads up a little bit just to make sure everything's going nice and clean before it goes in there. But now that that's taken care of and I got the nozzle kind of cleaned up, I'm going to go ahead and install the nozzle. Now the way I'm going to do this is, this is I'm just going to take and install it a few few turns. I'm not going to take it all the way up to the 
to the heat block. So as you can see, it's not butted all the way up. Otherwise, I'd be going all the way up here like this. And we don't want to do that. I want to leave it down a few threads so that I've got room to tighten up against the, the tube. So now the next thing I want to do is I want to take and reinstall the Bowden tube. And it's going to go all the way down to that nozzle. I want to make sure I keep pushing it until it doesn't go in anymore. Until it's all the way down and it feels like it's all the way down in there. I know where that notch was in that tube because where this was holding it. I can tell it's all the way down past that area. Now once again, the, I never did cool down this printer so it's still on and it's still hot. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and tighten all this back up. So I'm going to go ahead and grasp the heat block with the pliers and then I'm gently going to keep turning this and I don't want to over tighten but I want it nice and firm. If you feel like you're over tightening stop because you will break something. <laughs> So now that that is in place, next thing I need to do is fill, feed some filament through and let's see if there's any clog in the nozzle. I'm hoping there's not. Okay, so now I'm starting to press and it has some resistance there. I'm trying to see if I have anything come out of the nozzle, which I do not. So this is bad. Next thing I want to do is I want to try to clear out that nozzle a little bit. Now one thing that G-Tech does provide that's kind of cool is that it looks like a piano string of some sort. Um, this one kind of got stepped on, but let's see if I can at least get this up into that nozzle and see if I can break loose whatever is in there. And the one day I didn't bring my glasses home from work is the one day that I needed them the worst. <laughs> Take very great care not to touch the nozzle or the hot end. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the filament out because I've tried to push whatever was in there up into that filament. Okay, so now I'm going to push the filament back through and hope that whatever was got shoved up into the molten part of that filament. Oh uh, yeah, there we go. Starting to get some filament. Now I want to see if it will actually come out clean or if it's going to curl. Yeah, it's coming up pretty clean. What I am going to do is I'm going to do what's called an atomic pole or a cold pole. I'm just going to take and shut down the printer. I'm going to continue fe feeding filament through until I feel like it's not going to come out anymore. Because as it cools down, I want to keep pressure on that hot end, right on that nozzle. I think I'm just fine because it was only at 180 degrees Celsius but I just want to make absolutely sure everything's cleaned out of that nozzle. Okay, so I'm still pushing on it. It's barely coming out, but now it's reaching that point where it's not coming out so good. I'm going to get, just keep some pressure on it. Wait a few more seconds, and now I'm going to pull it out. Okay, so what that does it leaves you a pretty good representation of the hot end or of that inside of that nozzle. So I should have everything out of there. In fact, you can see the discoloration on, sorry about that. You can see the discoloration on there where it's not the blue color as much. So it definitely pulled some residue out. I'll probably do it a couple more times and then we'll see how it works. Okay, there it's at 180 degrees. So let's see, that's like the very minimum temperature you can push this through at. And it's going through just fine. So let me go ahead and turn the temperature up to one or to 200, which is where I normally print with this filament. And let's just see what it looks like. Okay, so we're reaching that 200 degree mark. And I just want to press through. That's feeling really good. It's 
still have a little bit of it where it's wanting to come off to the side, so I want to just push that needle up in there one more time. Give it a quick pull and just see what's in it. Once again, wishing I had my glasses. <laughs> Push it deep up inside that plastic and let's pull it out. Okay, I'm pushing the freshly cut PLA back in. Oh, that's much smoother. Yes, yeah, much smoother, a lot more flow to it. That looks perfect like that. That will definitely work. Next thing you need to do is set up uh, my print again, start it up going again and let's just see how she's looking and one thing I could never ever ever stress enough is anytime you mess with your hot end or with your nozzle be sure to home your bed and be sure to level it because it's always going to be a little bit different and you just do that by hitting you do that by going to prepare and all the way down to where is it at disable steppers Disable the stepper. That's the fastest way in the world to do this. Bring your heated bed out a little bit. Bring that onto there. Slide it across. You want it where there's some tension. Not a tremendous amount. Not loose either. You just want it where it's got some decent drag to it. Like that right there. It's a little bit too loose. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to loosen the nut in order to let the bed come up. That feels good. That feels good. Feels good. And honestly, the four corners are all you have to worry about because that's where your mounting points are for your print bed. Now it's just a matter of wiping down the bed and I can start the print. Next thing is just to watch that first level. Make sure that it's going down. Not too squished, not too where it just looks like it's just laying out on the bed. And you can actually reach over and just move it a little bit with your finger. If you can't move it, you know you're stuck down. If you can move it, then you need to adjust your bed down, up a little bit further in order to make it closer to the nozzle. Because this right here is just the skirt that's attached to the bed. And if that's attached to the bed, the rest of it will be attached to the bed. Anyway, guys, thank you very much for watching. I got a time lapse to film, so I will catch you in the next one. Hey guys, thank you very much for watching this video. When you have a chance, please check out my website, jimmyshawstidbits.com, where you can purchase merchandise from my Tee Public store, as well as check out my Amazon affiliate link. Anything purchased from one of those helps the channel tremendously, and I thank you for it. Also, if you'd like to support the channel as many of these people have, please check out my Patreon link over here. You can support the channel from there. Also, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, and please subscribe over here. And if you'd like to check out one of my other videos, please give one of these a shot. I think you're going to like them, especially that one over there. Thank you very much for watching. Have a great day. Take care.